By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I'm going to open up some posts. I've got three nice letters. And uh, yeah, here we go. I'm going to open all of them and have a look what's in there, what's inside. It's always good, right, to get more cards. Let's check it out. I think they're just small things, by the way. I'm not expecting anything spectacular. And I'm first going to open up this one because I'm not 100% sure what it is. So let's try to open it up here. There we go. Okay. Let's see. Let's just check if there are no per personal data. Nope. Just one card or a bundle of. That is good enough for me, man. So here we go. Let's have a look. Bam, 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 bam. And these are probably two new ones. Okay. And this is the card that it's all about. Let's flip it. Ooh, the Knowledge Vault. Actually, wow. Yeah, I ordered this. I forgot about it. But this is a really cool card. Look at the art alone. Before I just discuss what it does, look at the art. Art, And obviously, this is by Amy Weber. Uh, you might know her work from Time Walk and uh, Time Elemental. She really loves, like, she loves to make pictures where there are a lot of gears and there's a lot of stuff happening there are a lot of details in her pictures it's really really a work of art uh, this card is four to cast and it's actually a card that lets you draw new cards so it's um, from legends four to cast two to use and tap right and it reads take a card from your library without looking at it and place it face down under knowledge vault sacrifice knowledge vault to discard your entire hand and take the cards under the vault into your hand if Knowledge Vault leaves play, put all the cards under it in your graveyard. Now, you may think, wait a minute, so you gotta pay four to cast, then you gotta pay two every time to put a card under it, and if your opponent destroys your artifact, all the cards under the Knowledge Vault actually go into your graveyard, so you lose them? I mean, how is that good? Well, the interesting thing about this card is, first off, it's a way to refill your hand in any color, right? There are not a lot of cards that can do that. And this is a colorless card. So if you've got a deck that quickly empties, you know, his hand or has some mid game issues with, with finding new cards, and this could be the solution. Secondly, you can use it as an instant effect. A lot of these cards have these clauses where it says only during your upkeep, you can use it only during your upkeep. You can activate it only during your upkeep, but here you can activate it as an instant on instant speed. So in your end steps, uh, in the end step of your opponent, you simply put a card in your knowledge vault, you untap it again. Then if your opponent wants to disenchant it or shatter it or do whatever with it in response, you can sack the knowledge vault, right? And you're probably thinking, yeah, but I have to discard my hand. Well, maybe you want to discard your hand because you're playing some kind of reanimator strategy. Maybe you've got old lands in your hand or maybe your hand's simply empty. And I've actually played against the Knowledge Vault because uh, Yoop, my brother, one of the people I play against a lot, you know, uh, also on the channel, by the way, he plays Knowledge Vault and it's surprisingly, I wouldn't say strong, but interesting and useful. So... Yeah, I thought this could be a nice addition uh, to my collection. So Knowledge Vault. Here we go. Let's put Knowledge Vault over here. Um, let's see what else do we have. We have this one and this one. Okay. This is nice. This is from Louis. He organizes the X-Point Singleton. And uh, I got some videos of X-Point Singleton. And actually, it's free to join. They've got a pretty big group now, I believe, on Facebook. So if you like the X-Points, it's basically... Uh, old school, but with a point system. So, um, so yeah, if you're interested in that stuff, just have a look on their uh, on their Facebook page. And like I said, it's free to join. I believe they have monthly uh, tournaments, and sometimes I stream it or make a video. It's uh, it's kind of nice. It's a nice format. So, and he sent. I know what he sent me. I know what he sent me. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this because I want to share a kind of a clumsy. Um, combo with you guys. Uh, let's see. There's just so much sellotape here. Okay. 
you send a bunch of cards and just small stuff, but really nice though to, to kind of have in your collection. Uh, oh yeah, 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 okay. So yeah, two beautiful cards. Look at these cards. These are actually not the cards that I want to talk about, but we can kind of briefly go through them. So this is the Hive, five to cast. And I know now in modern magic, it's really easy to make tokens, but in old school, it was really a big deal because look at this card, five to cast, five and tap. And do you know what you get for five and tap? One, one, one flying wasp token. That's all you get. So, I mean, the R&D team of Magic back then must have been really worried about a card that could just make creatures out of nowhere. So you could see that they've really like tried to keep the power level really, really low. And obviously as Magic evolved, that really changed. And I guess the first time we kind of saw a card um, with good token creation stats, I think for me, Goblin Warrens kind of is a card that's like that, where you can sack one Goblin, get two back. You know, that's kind of one of those cards that can get out of hand. And besides, this is also a mono artifact, meaning that you have to tap it to actually use it. Remember, they didn't have the tap symbol uh, in Unlimited yet. So really nice card. And then there's a card, I just, I just love the art. And um, yeah, it's it's a four one. That's a problem. That one toughness, and you got to pay one blue during your one blue during your upkeep, or else it destroys itself. But I mean, four power in the air for four mana is really really good stats. The problem, of course, is that upkeep cost and the one toughness. And also remember, this is in blue, right? So when you're playing blue, you usually want to have two blue open to protect your creatures with a counter spell, right? That's even extra hard if you already lose a blue mana during um, during your upkeep. Then again, if you have a different strategy, for example, green-blue flyers, this creature could be useful in such a strategy. So that goes over here. Then we've got, I believe these are the other four cards. This is a playset. And uh, this playset kind of reminds me of Ron, the Upton Troll of the Netherlands. And uh, then you kind of know already what, what it is, right? Um, so here we go. We've got the Upton Troll. So two of them in here, and I believe two others in here. This really came here quickly, um, by the way, Louis. So thank you for shipping them so quickly. So all three often trolls, one red and two to cast for a two, two regeneration creature. This is actually a creature that saw a lot of play. And now in modern, um, modern old school, it kind of got surpassed by the Setch Troll. Setch Troll, you know, potentially being a three, three for three mana and also having regenerate, obviously a better option, but still, this is a cool card. And there's, there was actually a really funny uh, combo with this card. And I think I've got it here. Wait, wait, I'm gonna get the card now, I'll show you. So it's, it's something people used to play. It kind of showed you how, <laughs> maybe how bad players were at my, uh, at my game store, including myself. I don't know if that's the fun. And we were just exploring the game, right? So this is uh, a stone giant and you can combine stone giant with off control. And uh, the way it works, we kind of get it out or else we've got a lot of glare. So the way it works is um, when you have Stone Giant, it's a 3-4 creature. You can tap to make one of your own creatures a flying creature until end of turn. Target creature which must have toughness less than Stone Giant's power and it's destroyed at the end of the turn. Now this is, this is the thing where it gets interesting. It is destroyed at the end of the turn. That means I can give my often troll flying, I can fly over my opponent, for example, combine it with the Gravity Sphere, deal two damage to my opponent, and then I can spend one red to regenerate it. Another interesting thing is I can also use uh, Fire Breathing because I can first give it flying, right? And after that, I can attack and then I can pump it with a Fire Breathing. So, I mean, there are all sorts of kind of nice nice tricks with, with Stone Giant, really a really fun card. Just gonna put it nice back in the top loader because this card is for a friend of mine, it's not for me. It's coming your way, Frank, if you're watching this. Thank you for making that altar. It's coming your way. Um, okay, but that's something else. So we've got the mail day thus far. Look at the beautiful cards. And then I have another one in here, a card from green that I think is a little underestimated. That's, that's just my humble opinion. You don't see this often, this card, these cards, because I believe it's a playset. Um... But, I mean, it has potential, it has potential. Open it up here. This is from my friend Bocek from the Czech Republic. Really, really relaxed guy, very professional as well. 
bought it through Magic Cart Market. And here we see the cards themselves. Well, not the cards yet, because this is, of course, protection for the cards. So we've got some of these forests and some of these forests. But here, look, this is what it's all about for me. These sandstorms, let me know in the comments below how you feel about this card. I think they're more useful than you might think. First off, they could be good in a sideboard strategy against all those weenie decks, right? Secondly, they're kind of nice with a protocol sorcerer, right? If your opponent, let's first look at what it is. Like it's one green, right? From Arabian Nights. Beautiful art by Brian. Brian Snotty, beautiful art. And it says all attacking creatures suffer. It's so nice. Suffer one damage. I love that. I love the wording on old school cards. Anyway, they suffer one damage. And um, my thinking was you see Savannah Lions a lot, but you also see a lot of decks with, for example, Lana Rare Elves as a mana dork. And then they attack with the Lana Rare Elves in between if they cannot utilize the mana. And then you can kind of punish them for it by playing a Sandstorm. Also, if they, you know, attack with uh, a Mishra's Factory, and for example, you have a Desert or a Protocol Sorcerer, then this card comes out of nowhere and deals an extra damage. I think one of the, the powerful things about Sandstorm is that nobody plays with it. So it's almost always a surprise. Obviously, after you've played it once, they know the surprise, but still. So I was thinking maybe in a sideboard, and then I believe Edo, uh, a player from the Netherlands, uh, told me, uh, about that idea. You can also combine it, of course, with Living Plane. So Living Plane is a really cool card from Legends that makes all your lands turn into 1-1 one -one creatures. And then, you know, your opponent attacks with the 1-1 one -one creatures or you try to kind of lure out an attack, maybe play a Siren's Call or something. And then they attack with all their creatures and you cast one of these. I mean, it's pretty sweet, right? But also in general, if you think, how often doesn't it happen? that you just miss one point of damage. Combining this, for example, with a Triskelion, that can also be interesting. Um, Urnum Jin. I mean, why is Urnum Jin such a strong creature? Because it's got five toughness, right? They attack with an Urnum and you have, I don't know, a Suchi open. And they're like, okay, you can block in your Suchi, but you lose your Suchi. It's not a good trade for you. And then you play this one. I do understand I, a lot of the situations I'm describing are still two for one scenarios, so it's not ideal. But just the fact that nobody plays Sandstorm, and I can already, from the top of my head, give you like, I don't know, five, six scenarios where the card could be good. You know, to me, it kind of shows its potential. But, you know, that's that's me. Let me let me know when it comes below what you think of Sandstorm. Okay, so this was our uh, uh, mail day video of today. I think I've just got a lot of really, really cool cards. Um, really happy. Looking forward to start brewing with these. Knowledge Vault, I think is art-wise my favorite of these cards. Although, again, you know, old school art, I can't really compare. They just all have their own little uniqueness and there's so much flavor in the old school cards. So this is it for today. I would like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And um, yeah, if you'd like to help the channel out, hit that like button, it helps a lot. And you can also consider becoming a patron via uh, the Patreon platform of Timmy Talks. There's probably a little info card appearing somewhere. Click on it, check it out. It's probably worth your while. Thank you anyway for watching another video right here on the channel and see you guys next time. Let's go to the end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.